Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today I'm going to show you the darning stitch. I'm showing it to you on the Janome 3160, but this same built-in stitch is on many Janome machines, so the same procedure will apply to most Janome machines that have this stitch. The uh, controls, of course, may be in a different position and used different ways, but it's the same steps. So when we go to stitch number 57, I'm going to go over here to the ones column, go up here to five, then go over here and go up to seven. Now, notice stitch width has disappeared because we're not going to use that function. Uh, and it calls for foot R. So we're going to take this foot off. The R foot is your buttonhole foot. It has an R on it like that. Now, the procedure for doing this is outlined in your book on page 32. So we'll basically walk through that. First thing it says to do is make sure you've opened this all the way up like this. And we put this under here, put this down. Now we're not doing a buttonhole, so you don't need to use the little buttonhole lever back here and it has no indication of that up there. But we do need to have the thread underneath the foot. So to do that, you take a single stitch, Lift up the foot, pull the fabric out of there, undo that single stitch, and now we have the thread underneath the foot. Okay, when you have a tear in your fabric, I'm going to just draw one with my friction pen here. And the friction pen, by the way, is a pen that we sell here. Um, it basically disappears on lighter colored fabric when you iron it. So it's a really great pen for that. But I'm going to draw a line on here and that's going to be like our tear or cut in the fabric okay the darning stitch makes a really dense uh, it's almost like rebuilding the fabric this is what it's going to look like it's very dense stitch now this would be good for if you're for instance uh, have one of those jeans buttons that's actually pulled out of the fabric and you have to kind of rebuild that uh, fabric behind there this is a good stitch for that even with that you still might want to have like a thin piece of backing fabric behind that and cut away some of the excess fuzz from the old fabric when you do this darning stitch again but then once you've got that, you can put a new tack button on. It's really neat that way. Okay, so also with my sample, you can see you can have a longer one and a shorter one, and I'm going to show you how to do that also. When the stitch starts, it's going to start down in this corner and work its way back. So on this, we're going to want to start like right about here. I'm putting the dot on the fabric. You don't have to do that, of course, but to just for demo purposes and lining it up. So we want to line this up so that dot is right under near where the, where the, where the needle goes. Also, you want to have the cut of your fabric or the, the place that you want to mend horizontal to the direction of sewing that, or perpendicular to the direction of sewing. Make sure it's not going uphill or downhill. So you don't want to miss that. Okay, and at this point, all we need to do is press on the pedal and it starts on its own and it keeps sewing. Notice what's happening. The needle is gradually moving to the right. Okay. Another thing I'm noticing, now when it gets to the end, it stops right there. And now we can just move this over and keep sewing continually. That's what I did with this shorter stitch here. It actually stopped here I was able to lift up the fabric, move it over, start right where I stopped before, do another one and another one. So you can make your darning stitch as long as you need it to be. Now one thing with this that I noticed, see how that's going uphill like that? We want to correct that. And here in the book, it shows you at the bottom how to adjust the evenness of the darning. So that one's tending to go uphill like this. That means we want to press the down button. So let's move the cursor over under where it says D5, and we want to press the down button. I'm going to go down to 1. 5 is kind of the middle. It goes all the way up to 9, I believe. So the next one, I'll cut away my extra threads here, just kind of get them out of the way. There we go. 
And start near there, that perpendicular like that. So let's see how that changes the stitch. Okay. A little wonky, but it's all right. Okay, one thing I'm noticing is that I kind of overcorrected. I overcorrected and now it's kind of making the stitch going the wrong way. So rather than going all the way down to one, let's bump that up to say three, middle of the two. Okay, another thing is that you may not want to have your darning stitch be that long. So let's show you how you can make it shorter. And this point, we want to make it shorter. So what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing, but I'm going to show you something. If you've already sewn one darning stitch cycle and you want to adjust the length, it's not going to allow you to do it. And I'll show you what happens. So we start here and I'm just wanted a little bit shorter. So I go like this, but you hear that multiple beep that this makes, this is how we would shorten it. It's not going to allow you to do that. So let's just start over on that. Go back to this, get out of that stitch, get back into that stitch fresh. Now we have not in this new stitch, we have not already done a darning stitch. Let's start over here. So I'm going to take about three or four stitches backwards. So it does the beginning locking stitch goes one, two, three. At that point, I press this. It's going to take one more stitch back and then start going forward. And now you can see it's nice and short. And when I pressed this, it made that single beep. That means the machine accepted that command. Now notice it moved the needle back to the left so we can move our stitch this way. And I think we decided, oh, it's all right. I'm gonna just leave it like that. I'm overlapping the stitches a little bit because I don't want to have any um, gap there, but you can make them nice and even and straight. And you can just keep stitching that way until you've stitched the entire length of the tear in your fabric. So that's the darning stitch and how to adjust it. Um, it's a really useful stitch again if you want to make a nice thick uh, solid mend in your fabric. You would not necessarily want to use this on towels. I've tried it and it kind of flattens the, uh, the loops on the towels, but it is good for uh, hard surface woven fabric. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the box down below. And if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up. We have other videos that you can watch. Keep in mind, this procedure can be used on any Janome machine that has this 57 or the, this darning stitch and it may be a different number. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.